everyone, welcome to Connected, the bilingual space where we meet amazing human beings which one way or another are making this world a better place. Today we talk about music. We are going to connect with the super talented guitarist Gabriel Navia, who is in California in the US. Don't move, we are starting right now. Gabriel Navia started his professional music career as a charango player, touring and recording with the Indian music band Sukai at the end of 11. Today he is a producer, guitarist, multi-instrumentalist and composer. He has collaborated in three albums nominated for the Latin Grammys. Gabriel is one of the most foremost exponents of Latin music in the Bay Area. Combining flamenco, Cuban, Brazilian and Bolivian music with jazz, pop, rock, electronic and contemporary music, he has performed on many stages around the world including Asia, Europe, North and South America. After attending the Instituto Eduardo Laredo in Cochabamba, Bolivia and the School of the Arts of San Francisco, California, He went on to attend the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, the Jazz School of Berkeley, California, and in 2002, he received the Outstanding Musician Award at the Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. In 2007, he received a scholarship from Fundación Carolina to do a music postgraduate with the great flamenco artist Manuel Granado at the Conservatoire de Lisieux in Barcelona. It is my pleasure today to introduce Gabriel Navia, who is talking to us all the way from California in the US. Gabriel, thank you so much for taking the time to do this, and I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead with your first question. How did your life lead you towards the path of music? Any influences there? Hi, Fabiana. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thanks for inviting me. Um, well, your question, to, add, to answer your question, um, uh, I come from a musical family. My dad's a, 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 a great musician, uh, very well known in Bolivia, Edina Villa, um, a world famous charango player. Right. And uh, uh, he, he pretty much, and my mom too is also very musical oriented. So that had a lot to do with my, with my uh, origins. And, you know, just there was always music and instruments around the house as I was growing up in Cochabamba, Bolivia. I remember growing up and listening to, you know, the radio all the time. The radio would be on and they were playing music. I remember on Sundays we had uh, this really great program. I remember the name was uh, El Club de la Vieja Ola, which was a great radio station. We play all these, all these uh, songs, you know, and a lot of tango. We play a lot of tango music and a lot of boleros, Los Pachos, and it was great. It was great. I see. So from a very early age, you had a lot of like different influences. So growing up, I understand you've been You've been seeing all of this around you, but when was the time when you decided to pursue, to study music? Unlike a lot of people, I didn't really have to, like, I came to a point where I was like, maybe I'll have to do another career, but I already was into music. So it wasn't like, you know, like, oh, should I go for music? I, I, <laughs> I already was doing, you know, when I was uh, 11 years, 12 years old, I was already touring with my dad. Wow. In the US and, uh, We, we went into the studio and we recorded. My, the first time I was recording and, and, and composing at that age already. So to me, it was already had it clear that I was going to be a musician from the, from, you know, from the get go. When you were 11, you were already touring with your dad, like playing a guitar with him? Yeah, I was playing charango, in fact. He was playing oh, wow. two charangos and he'd be playing a guitar too. But I, and then we, so it was like this we had. Uh, Argentine guitarist, a great guitarist, his name is Enrique Coria. 
he's a wonderful guitarist and we had a uh, um pie player mauricio san martin who played the campanas and canas and my dad played the charango and i played the charango as well we had two charangos oh wow um and my dad's wife quentin uh she she was pretty much like the 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 person that would talk because she's the one that English is her first language, so and she she actually formed that band back in the seventies with the band Sukai, uh, and um, eventually we ended up. My dad ended up playing the guitar, and I was playing the charango mainly for 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 most of the time back then, and. Um, it must have been right around when I was like 16, 17 that I I, I I lost my instruments when I was in Bolivia. I had this really nice uh, project uh, uh, when I was going to Instituto Eduardo Laredo. Mm -hmm. And we were preparing for this big show uh, that was including Judith Carmona, which is a wonderful, she was my teacher, a wonderful singer, a wonderful person, a wonderful teacher. We had this show coming up, and I was producing it and directing it. And after the last rehearsal before the show, I had all my equipment and all my instruments and my charangos and stuff in the car, and they got stolen. Oh no! We went for a, yeah. We went to have a, yeah. It's one of those things that you know, a very big learning lesson. And and I went to sort of like um, you know, not a depression, but I like sort of like a change of mind, and and I I. Pretty much started playing the guitar. Um, when I came back to play with my dad, I was I was doing mostly guitar back then, and uh, so that he could be playing more the charango because that was his main instrument. And I, I took more interest in for, for the guitar when I was around 15, 16 years old. And uh, then I discovered Paco de Lucia, of course, and that totally changed my right. Well, but it is it is so guitar. crazy how life puts you in certain situations that sometimes you know it's yeah. not you're not the happiest, but then you find another path and you are a great guitarist too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now uh, it's it's uh, it's constant. You know, life changes constantly, and 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 you find your path. You you always identify yourself with somebody you admire, and that that will always leave a mark on you, you know, and, but then you make your own path right so that's and that's how it went to me for me like for another years you know i still you know I listen and learn from 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 all these wonderful artists like paco de lucia right. and john mclaughlin and Aldi Mayol, and a lot of great guitars that are you know that are out there i know you play other instruments as well tell us a little bit about about those which are the other instruments that you play and also, to which uh, path do those instruments take you? Yeah, well, you know, charango. I wish I, I wish I, 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 I had uh, you know more more time to, to, to devote myself to charango as well. Uh, uh, what I do is I live of music, so I play guitar constantly. Uh, I do have different projects where I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm required to play the guitar. And you know, I I perform as a solo musician, but I do play with other great musicians that that you know that are happy with my style of playing the guitar. So that you know gives me less time to play the charango. Right. <laughs> of course, I do play. I used to play saxophone as well, alto sax, when I was back in school. Um, I had this wonderful uh, teacher, Edward Wolf, who's an American from St. Louis, Missouri, is a trumpet player. And he did great, great work for, for the music uh, back in the 90s and, and 2000 in Bolivia. You know, and he taught at my school in Laredo, that's where I met him. And, and uh, in those days, I was exploring uh, jazz music a lot and saxophone was one of the things. Charlie Parker was one of my right. heroes that I was trying to get into. And then tell us a little bit, also, it's been so many years that you have been practicing and involved in the world music, and you have collaborated and you have worked with other musicians, whether as a guitarist and or a producer. 
from all of those experiences. Mm -hmm. And I know every time I ask this question to my guests, it's very difficult for them to answer. But from all of those experiences and the different artists that you work with, which one are the one that, which is the one that mark you on, on a special level or the one you have learned something different or something special? Well, um, that's a hard question, you know? <laughs> I'm sure. That's a hard question. Um, one of the early memories I have working with my dad, when, when, you know, we were still doing more uh, 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 Bolivian music, is this one of the chance we had to play with the San Francisco Symphony. Uh, and we did, uh, we were invited to do this part of this uh, symphony piece and and that was you know a very amazing moment but you know of course that was with my dad and right. that's definitely you know something that, that i always you know cherish and, and remember um you know other than that you know traveling with other great artists like george lamont i know you had an interview with him yes he's a, such a fantastic violin player and, and person and friend and brother to me um you know going on tour with him uh, also, you know, performing with some some of the greatest uh, Cuban musicians that live here in the Bay Area, like Fito Reynoso and Sandy Perez, which are two people that I admire a lot, and and and, and I have the great pleasure to work with and perform with too as well. Gabriel. Tell me, it has yeah, been yeah. so many years for you that not only you played in different countries, you played with different artists, you played all over the place, let's say. So what are your plans for the future? What do you see yourself doing or what would you like to do in the future? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> for the future, um, um, I'm hopeful that my sound will follow my steps in music, hopefully. <laughs> So uh, I, I would like to be able to tour with him you know, and have that same experience that my dad had with him. You know, that, that's one of the things that I look for for the future. And he definitely has all the aptitude. You know, he's four years old and he has really good ear. And since he was a baby, I've always played like a lot of high information music, music to him and, and all kinds of music. And he's uh, he, he has that that. Uh, inclination for music, right. and, you know. I'm, I'm hopeful for that. That's one of the things. You know, other thing, other than that, is just keep working. You know, keep working on the music. Uh, keep learning. Keep learning. What are you working on right now? I'm working on, on multiple projects right now. Actually, I have a show coming up this weekend uh, with Afro-Cuban musicians, and, and that's one of the projects I'm, I'm working on, called My Bagway. And we're going to be featuring about 10, 12 different people all playing drums and playing chants. And, and, and I have to put the guitar in it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in fact, we have a rehearsal later today and then on Thursday. Um, that's one of the projects I'm working on. Uh, another project I'm working on is that was I was mentioning with my dad on the studio. He's been recording and he, I've, I've gone and played the guitar for some of the pieces that he's put there. Um, another project uh, with George is the new album he's putting out together. Oh, great! Um, it's it's about almost done too. So those are the new projects that I'm working on right now. Great, Gabriel! Uh -huh. It has been so many years for you, not only as a kid, but you know, like growing up with your father and making like your own path and changing instruments and all and everything that the, that came along. So in the personal field, what did you learn all of these years as an artist? What I learned about as an artist is that, you know, you have to take every day as the last day of your life, you know, uh, and try to make the best of it and, and use all your knowledge towards your art so that you can craft your music or the, or the art that you're doing. You're doing working on and, and live that as a testimony of your existence and your your presence on this on this on this planet you know so um that's one of the things that i learned about about uh, you know as, as an artist you know that try to make every moment try to be present every moment when you, especially when you're on your instrument or, or working on your music 
Right, um, especially I wanted part. to say for the yeah. for the youngest people that are, you know, most of the time, like you had the great um, opportunity or chance to grow up in a family that supported you and actually was an example for you. But there are other kids or other young people that are kind of struggling because they are, you know, they don't have that part. And they've been told mm -hmm. that it's gonna be hard, you're not gonna make money, and this and that, you know. So. Well, I, I, I cannot tell you how much I've seen of that, especially in Bolivia. You know, I feel like, and I mean, there's a reason for that too. Uh, my, my mom and dad's generation, especially, you know, they have that stigma about musicians being uh, bohemian and, and, you know, being, having a, like a, like a bohemian kind of life, right. not not very healthy. But I think uh, you know, I think my generation, our generation, it's it's kind of proven them wrong. It's true. Way, because you know, I see now like so many things happening in Bolivia artistically wise. You know, uh, so many great musicians, so many artists that are serious about it, and, and a lot of them are you know healthy people. True. You know, they they don't like smoke or, or, or drink a lot. You know, like. They would do excesses. They know. I feel like back in the day, or the previous generation, uh, there was a lack of information, a lack of knowledge, and people were wasn't aware. Like nowadays, we're you know we have all this information coming to us, so we that make better choices. You know, and I feel that makes a, a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. Like being a musician is a serious career, and and it, it's a serious commitment. It, it takes a lot of work. You know, it's not just. Oh, I'm gonna go play a guitarreada and get drunk. <laughs> Definitely you know, that's, not. And that's a stigma thing. And if that no, is that's a stigma and thing. if that is a path you wanna take, that there's that's how far you're gonna go as well. <laughs> that's it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you wanna have that kind of lifestyle, it's it's uh, you know, it's not uh, it's not gonna take too long for you to realize it's not the the healthy way to go. You know? That is true. Gabriel, thank you so much for the time you took to spend with us. Please share all your social media information, all the platforms where people can Absolutely. listen to your music. Go ahead. You can follow me on, on Instagram at Gabriel Navia underscore music. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Gabo Navia or on Facebook at Gabriel Navia. www.gabrielnavia.com Thank you very much for having me, Fabiana. It's been a pleasure. Um, Bye. I hope I hope we get the the opportunity to come and, and meet in person and, and maybe even play the program. Right, I'll be glad to. And uh, you know, a big hug for everybody over there in Santa Cruz. I have a lot of family and friends over there, and uh, you know, just sending all my love and thank you so much. Thank you, Gabriel. Bye bye. So there you go. Remember to find Gabriel Navia, follow him, support him, and share his music. To connect with me, please send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time with me. Bye-bye.